Hello there folks, DJ Bergstar here back with another tip. So today I want to talk about a Max for Live device called Mono Sequencer. Um, I will say that in the past I usually steer away from some of these um, sequencers like this just because I find that a lot of them are sort of gimmicky a bit. Um, however, this one seems to check all the boxes for me. Um, it has a real easy interface to use um, and just kind of does what you think it's going to do and it's laid out really nice and it comes up with some um, great results and so I actually find that it is a very good um, sequencer to use. Um, I will say real quick that the um, clip editor in Ableton Live these days is so capable and powerful that you could probably get the same thing done, although it would take you a lot longer, and that's sort of what I like about that sequencer. But, you know, the clip editor can do, you know, the scale function now and all these follow actions and slide and pressure and velocities and everything. So you can do quite a bit in just the clip sequencer. But um, this mono sequencer Max for Live device um, is pretty cool. So let's listen to what I have here. Okay, um, so these last three are um, sort of added, you know, drums and bass and stuff. So it's really just these two that are using the um, mono sequencer. And um, basically you throw the sequencer on and then you have to choose the sound, of course. I threw on a serum on the first one. And the second one I'm using an Ableton Live sequencer here, um, or uh, instrument. Um, so those are the two uh, sounds I chose. Um, and so what I'd like to do is basically we'll just make another one from scratch and you can see how easy it was to build this one. Um, so. We'll just go from left to right and look at these controls while we're building a new one. Um, instead of loading up a new one, I can just go to an empty pattern um, and then we can go from there. So this is how it looks when you first launch it. Um, it's basically just one note that just keeps going. Let's listen. All right, not too exciting. Um, anyway, let's look at the uh, left here first. So this quantize button basically means if you have multiple patterns here and it will do up to 12, um, when you want to go from one to another, um, you can hit quantize and then if you move this, it will wait you know, until a full bar until it starts. Um, so it doesn't just start right away when you move the um, patterns up and down, uh, which is kind of cool if you have that uh, quantize on. Also, you can copy your sequence and paste it into another pattern and edit it or something. So that's what this is. Um, now let's go to the next area. Um, so you have pitch, velocity, octave, the duration of the notes, and repeat, which is interesting. It'll take, when it hits one note, it really hits two. And so it has like this little glitchy effect, um, which we won't be using for this particular uh, song, but uh, you might use it in something you have. Um, so um, now it defaults here to 16 steps. You can see the steps right here. Um, so we can crank that up all the way to 64, and that's what I did. Um, when you do that, you'll see that it's already sort of populated with things. Um, and so that brings me to my almost most important knob of this whole thing is this clear button here. So it just, whatever you had, it'll just clear it and you can start again, which is nice. Um, so we'll start with the pitch um, and we'll work from there. Um, well, again, down here, we'll move this 16 over to 64. And this is, um, you know, it'll not play at certain times and I don't exactly like that for what I'm doing. So this fill button here, you can have them all on, you can have them all off, you can have them random. So some of them are on and off. Um, but I like to have all of them on for what I'm doing anyway here on this particular um, 
example. Uh, so let's move over to the next section. And so this is the section you're really going to be working in a lot. Um, now I wanted this to be on a uh, eighth note. So I'm going to go ahead and just change that right here right now um, instead of it defaulted to a 16th note. So, um, so let's look at these controls. So never and measure one, two, and four, they mean um, when you're playing a track, um, this will repeat or start again basically after one measure or two measures or four, but I just want it to never repeat. I want it to just keep going, and in that way, you can have something going on for 10 minutes, and it will always be changing randomly every time um, and uh, give you this uh, constant evolving sound, which is awesome. Um, so when I say random, I mean... Um, this is kind of like an arpeggiator, um, so it has up, down, and those things, but up in this case means left to right, down means right to left, and up, down means it'll go back and forth, and then drunk is a section I don't like to choose because it'll like stand one note for four times before it changes and does weird things, so... I don't really choose drunk. <laughs> anyway, um, the random is what we're going to be doing. Um, so it just randomly goes from something to another, and that way it'll just keep going and keep randomizing the whole time, which is pretty awesome. Um, and then this is really important, this uh, conform to scale and this edit to. So right here is where you set your scale and key um, here. So I'll, this song is in the key of C minor, so I've set it to C, and then over here I've set it to minor, so I know that it matches my bass line and stuff. So we're in C minor, and um, if I was to hit random now, and since whatever you're on is what it's going to be, you know, looking at. So um, right now it's looking at the pitch, and I've got this setting here. You can have zero all the way to 100. And that'll be how sort of drastically it uh, changes the pitches. So if I set that around 70, we can hit random, and there are the notes. Um, and for velocity, let's move this over so it sees everything, and then we'll hit that clear button, which is important. Um, and then now we can randomize this velocity, and we can do that a little less. Um, and then we have octave, and in this particular... Um, instrument um, it gets way too high uh, you know uh, these notes and, and even too low for the instrument I have selected so um, I clear that out with that clear button and I'm just gonna not do any randomization on the actual octave for the duration here we gotta pull that over again and uh, again we can clear it with that clear button and um, I'm gonna do a duration you know about that same thing in the lower 20s or something. Uh, man, that was too much probably, so we can clear that again. That's a really important button there. And uh, let's lower that a lot so it just does a little bit of uh, duration changes. There we go. Um, and repeat uh, is interesting. Like I said, it'll... Whoops, I can grab that section and move it around. Uh, we'll clear everything out again. Um, but repeat, um, I'm not going to be doing any of that glitchy stuff where it plays two notes like... Uh, at the same time it would play one um, uh, so we're just going to leave that off as well um, so basically we're just doing this pitch here and we're randomizing it um, so let's see what else we have now this these little arrows um, basically it takes the whole sequence and you can move it over like that see nudge it a bit back and forth or up and down uh, so it can do that kind of thing as well which is kind of fun so let's listen to what it put together right there Maybe I wanted those pitches to go a little bit higher, so let's go back to pitch here, and um, maybe I'll clear that out, and we'll set that even a little higher in the 80s, maybe. Maybe I like higher notes a little bit more, and that's where you would use the nudge. Okay. Great. All right, so over here, so these are the steps. You know, you can have 
less, uh, which is good if you're doing like a drum pattern or something and you just want it set to eight or something. Um, and you have a drum rack over here you can look at um, instead of a, you know, a synthesizer. And you can also use this for something like that, like a drum rack to get interesting patterns um, that are randomly generated that way. Um, and that brings me to what's right next to that is um, if you have a drum rack next to this, um, you'll know that drum racks are kind of, you have to really specifically tell it the box of squares you want it to look at or it just be playing a bunch of blank notes. So you what you do is you actually come up here and you put in the first note um, in a clip and when you hit play it uses that as the baseline um, for where it's going to start randomizing. So if you only have you know 12 drums or something it will start right at the middle where you tell it to so when you're randomizing some stuff it's actually playing the drums instead of just a bunch of blank notes um, but we're not playing that so we don't have to worry about the MIDI programming of it all right now um, so you can look into that later if that's something you really want to work with um, so anyway um, we have the swing off I don't want it to swing if you did you could set the percentage and stuff so um, that's what I've got set up here on this first track it's just randomizing, sounding nice. Alright, let's go to the next one. So here we are again. Um, this one will be quicker because you already know what all these controls are about. So we'll get an empty pattern um, to work with. And this time I wanted to set it to way less, like just a half note there. And um, again, we want six, 64 steps, so it randomizes for a long time, and we can clear that out first, and um, we'll do like a randomization again, maybe up in the 70s or so for the notes, uh, maybe a little higher. Um, we can see how that sounds, and it's going to play a lot slower um, this time with the half note here selected, and let's move this over as well. And we'll set that to all, so they all strike when I want them to, or just every note is going to go ahead and hit. Uh, so let's hear what that sounds like. Oh, okay, so it's just going one way. I forgot to set this to random, so we just want it to jump around anywhere. See that? There we go. Okay, so, you know, as far as velocities, uh, we can do that as well. We can hit clear. And I can do a little randomization on that. Um, we'll keep the octave again. I just want to flatten that with the clear. And uh, duration. Um, you can also draw stuff in. You don't have to, you know, I can just kind of do that with my mouse uh, if I wanted to as well. Um, also, you'll notice in the background there's all these gray numbers and notes showing up. So if I'm in uh, just drawing in my own note, uh, it'll tell me what note that is in that gray uh, window that kind of pops up back there. Um, and then you sometimes have to hit conform to scale because you might have chosen a note that's not in your scale. Um, so that's sort of how that works. Let's hear these two together. Alright, so basically we just put together both of these tracks and it was pretty quick. Um, and let's play the whole thing together. Whoops, uh, I wanted to turn these back on. Okay, let's try that. Okay, well, I just wanted to sort of introduce you guys to this mono sequencer because out of all the sort of sequencers I've used and use, um, this one, um, if you're doing, depends on what style of uh, music you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish, but for this kind of thing, um, this is a very um, easy and simple way to get some really cool stuff done, and uh, you might want to use it yourself. So, um, anyway. 
Thanks for uh, watching again. Hope to see you guys on the next one. DJ Bergstar out.